Render Man comes with a unique and amazing collection of light filters, which lighting TDs at Pixar use to creatively craft and refine their lights to enhance mood, emotion and storytelling of our films. In the real world, this is often achieved through the use of blockers, barn doors, gobos and other lighting tricks, and Render Man's light filters are a powerful and flexible way to not only do the same, but also a whole lot more when lighting your scenes. In this first lesson, I'll show you how you can actually attach light filters to your USD Solaris lights. And then from there, I'll show you all of the creative uses that you can use them for. Okay, so let's have a look at how we attach light filters to our USD lights. So here we have our still life scene and I've added a dome light which just adds a bit of fill light to the whole scene. And then here I've got a rectangle light. Now it's currently hidden so if I turn it on you'll see where it is. So it's sitting right up in this top corner here of the shot. Now what I want to do is I want to apply a light filter to this light. And do I do that by dropping in a Pixar light filter node. So the first thing about light filters is they need to be further down the node graph than the light that you want to attach the light filter to. And so knowing that, let's drop in a Pixar light filter. So we select the wire and then we type in Pixar light filter. So at the top here under primitive type, you can see we have a number of options. We have barn door, we have cookie, we have our intensity multiplier light filter, ramp, and we also have a rod filter. But we're not going to go into these ones for the minute. We're just going to have a look at the barn light filter to start with. So the first thing you want to do is you want to click add. And if you look under the scene graph tree, you can see that we have our Pixar barn light filter added. So now we have our light filter created, what we need to do is specify which light this light filter is attached to. And we can do this under light path. And you can see here by default it has this prim path. But what we actually want to do is we actually want to attach it to our top light. So if we pick up and drag our top light into the light path, you can see now that our light filter is now attached to our top light and the render has now changed. So how do we see it in the viewport? Well, we select the light filter node and hovering over the viewport, what we do is we press enter. And now you can see that our light filter has been cre created in the center of the scene. But what happens if we want to actually parent it to the light? Well, this is where this light filter path comes into it. So you can see here that we have our top light prim path here. And all we need to do to parent the filter to the light is make sure that this prim path is the same as this one. So if I just cut it and then paste it here, you can now see that our light filter is now parented to our light. And so you can see here that this is what our light filter is called. And again, if we look under the scene graph tree, you can see the hierarchy. We've got our top light and then under here, we've got our barn door light filter. And so we can call this whatever we like. And by default, every time we drop in a light filter, we have to give it a unique name. And so this is where this value comes in. But you can call this anything you like. So you could call it Pixar light filter underscore top light. And now you can see under the scene graph tree again, the changes have been applied. So let's have a look at a couple of other things within the Pixar light filter. You can see here in the viewport, we have our manipulators. And this is how we can start to transform our light filter itself. So if I just move it visibly into the middle of the scene, you can see here that this is where the light filter starts to have effect. And then if I select the top light itself and I start to move it, you can see that the you can see that the light filter moves with the light. So it's now parented to wherever that light is. Let me just undo that. So we have a couple of buttons here. So this one here removes this light filter from the stack. This next button here allows us to move the light filter up in the stack. So when we start to have multiple light filters that are attached to a light, we can actually control their stacking hierarchy with this button. This next button here resets all the parameters. So again, if I want to reset it back to where it was, I can just press the reset button. And so this last button here will load in the values from other USD primitives of the same light filter name. So if you want to do a light filter override, you would select which light filter you want to override the parameters and then select this and it will then inherit those parameters from this light filter path. And so one of the very powerful features of the Pixar light filters is that you can attach multiple light filters to the same light. And we can do that by keep adding them in. So if we want to add, say, a rod filter, we select rod filter from here and then we press add. 
and then if I just close this down you can see here that we now have our rod filter and because we want to attach it to this light we actually have to paste in the prim path of the light and again if I want to parent it to the light I would do the same by adding it to the light filter path and then I'll just rename it as well so I actually undid the parenting of the rod filter because I wanted to show you one last thing in this lesson before we finish and that's how you can manipulate and control each of these light filters individually. But at the minute you can see that our Pixar barn light filter is highlighted in yellow and this means that this is the currently selected light filter and I can swap between them by pressing G so at the minute this is selected and if I press G on the keyboard I can now select the rod filter. So let me go back and I can select the barn filter and I'll move it into the frame again so we can really see where it is. And then if I press G, I can then move the rod filter into the shot as well. And now this starts to darken where that rod filter is. And I can scale them as well and I can rotate them. So if again, if I scale that, move it. And so this is one way that you can transform your light filters. So again, I just want to move this light filter back out. Let's scale it down a little bit. Okay, so this has been a very quick intro into how to attach light filters to your light and the basic overall usage of them. And in the next few lessons, we'll go through each of these filters in turn and we'll have a look at the parameters and how you can use them for various different creative lighting uses. Mm -hmm.